When someone mentions the Underground Railroad, we often think of runaway slaves making a courageous journey north to freedom, and individuals such as Harriet Tubman, who risked her life guiding runaway slaves to freedom. But did you know that the Underground Railroad also headed south? Florida was also a destination for freedom seeker African Americans who came seeking refuge among free black and Seminole Indian communities and resisting re-enslavement through military service and warfare both against and for the British, the Spanish, and the Americans. They developed free black communities such as Fort Mose near St. Augustine and Fort Negro 15 miles from the mouth of the Apalachicola River, both of which flourished during the mid-18th and early 19th centuries. Fort Negro was built by the British during the War of 1812. After they evacuated the fort in the spring of 1815, they left it in the hands of the 300 African American and 30 Seminole and Choctaw Indians who had come here seeking refuge. Here the former slaves and Indians cultivated the land and began profitable plantations around the fort. Fort Negro soon was seen as a beacon of light to restless and rebellious slaves. It was also soon seen as a threat to white slaveholders in Georgia, and in July of 1816, the American Army, under the command of Major General Andrew Jackson, was given the order to destroy Negro Fort and to return the blacks to their white owners. The end was not a happy one for the inhabitants of the Negro Fort, when out there on the Apalachicola River, a gunship opened fire with a large hot ball and had a direct hit on the fort's magazine, exploding the fort, killing most of its inhabitants, and causing that sound to be heard all the way to Pensacola, Florida. The sight that greeted the Americans who entered the fort on the morning of July 27, 1816, was a horrible one. The remains of 270 black and Indian warriors and family members killed in the magazine explosion lay scattered about. The dead were quickly buried in an unmarked mass grave, and the survivors were taken prisoner and turned over to Georgia slaveholders who justified their title to them by saying that their ancestors had owned the ancestors of the prisoners. Jackson's plan had been a complete success. In one blow, his armies had destroyed the heart of black resistance in western Florida. Behind me is the burial site for the 270 people killed, women, children and men. They were buried in a mass grave right behind me. The only thing left here at the site is the depressions in the soil that show that there was once a grave here. Those that gave their lives on the July morning in 1816 would remain nameless but their struggle for freedom would live on in the hearts of the men and women who would fight for an end to slavery in this country. Fort Negro lives on as a monument to the desire of a people to achieve freedom, a freedom that they would defend at all costs. <laughs>